Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for the celebration, dear brothers and sisters, and now we stand with Ulu Tamilore. And she went on the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayers as their brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to us today. Then with Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father, through Christ our Lord, for this couple, his servants, that he lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness, pour out your grace upon these, your servants, Lutami Lord and Chiwen, that coming together before your altar, it may be confirmed in love for one another. The cross, our Lord. Amen. Let us now be seated and listen to the readings of Holy Spirit.
A reading from the book of Sirach. Blessed the husband of a good wife. Twice lengthened are his days. A worthy wife brings joy to her husband. Peaceful and full is his life. A good wife is a generous gift. Bestowed upon him who fears the Lord. Be he rich or poor, his heart is content. And a smile is ever on his face. A gracious wife delights her husband. Her thoughtfulness puts flesh on his bones. A gift from the Lord is her governed speech. And her firm virtue is of surpassing worth. Choicest of blessings, choicest of blessings is a modest wife. Priceless her chastity. A holy and decent woman adds grace upon grace. Indeed, no price is worthy of her temperate soul. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heavens, the beauty of a virtuous wife is the radiance of her home. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for the celebration, dear brothers and sisters, and now we stand If I speak in human and 
which other tongues, but do not have love. I am a resounding call or a clashing symbol. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude, it does not seek to own interest, it is not good temper, it does not brood over injury, it does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. So that there are many one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you loved them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gifts to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I may know to them your name, and I will make it known. That the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Most weddings, the couple makes sure to have a photographer around, but uh, you brought a paparazzi here. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to ask, gentlemen, if you can step off to the side while I preach these words of uh, perhaps the video, but if the others could take the pictures from the side aisles, that'd be great. Yeah, you can step in, take a picture, but move out of the way. Dear friends, we gather under 
very joyful circumstances. And I want to start expressing some pleasantries, uh, welcoming all of you who are gathered here. In the first place, I'd like to uh, extend a special welcome to Father Kings in Yaka, uh, who is uh, uh, a resident at St. Matthias, the Apostle Parish in Lanham, which is the family church of the bride. Uh, Father Kenneth, you are welcome uh, to the celebration. Uh, Father Kenneth and I uh, were actually colleagues in the seminary back in Nigeria. He was just one year ahead of me, so the moment uh, we walked in, uh, mentioned his name, I had a little trouble uh, figuring out, and once he said, Enyak, I said, well then you should know me. But I used to have a little more, a lot more hair back then. So <laughs> that's uh, But it's good to have you here. And of course, I want, next I want to uh, express special gratitude uh, to the parents of uh, both the, uh, the bride and the groom. Uh, mentioned them by name, uh, Mr. Femi uh, Oshila, and of course his wife, uh, uh, is it Buki? Buki, yes, uh, Buki Oshila, who have uh, produced this wonderful young man. Uh, raise him in the fear of the Lord. It's good that you're here. It's good that you led him to the altar on this day. And uh, I'd like to extend the same uh, gratitude uh, to the parents of uh, the bride, uh, certainly uh, uh, the father, Oge uh, Chupu, Amazon, and of course uh, the mother, uh, Dr. Chinya uh, Amazon, who are here. Your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with the sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism. They may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intention. Have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and His Church? Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, please face each other. Join your right hand and declare your consent before God and His Church.
May the Lord, in His kindness, strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment His blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one See this ring. See this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and my fidelity. And the name of the Father. And the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, as we call to mind the special gift of grace and charity by which God has been pleased to crown and consecrate the love of our sister, Ching Wen, and our brother, Lutami Lore, let us commend them to the Lord. Lord, 
Jesus who were present in our midst as Mutami Lore and uh, Chingwen seal their union. Accept our prayer and fill us with your spirit to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And now let us command all these prayers into the hands of our Father in heaven as we say the prayer that the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Often that you see a bride being walked down by a, a non huh? uh, the, the grandfather is 91. <laughs> thank you, uh, Dr. Ugo, for being here. We thank the Lord who's preserved your life to witness this joyful occasion, uh, the marriage of your, your granddaughter. And I would I'll just say a general welcome to everybody because uh, it's a packed church and uh, it's good that it's packed. And so many people to witness this joyful day. Uh, Tam and Chin, uh, or rather Chinwen, uh, have uh, chosen some wonderful readings for us to reflect on on this their special day. Uh, of course, the the first reading from the book of Sirach sings the. You know, the, 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 the joy of a good woman, the beauty of a God-fearing woman, it compares it to the, to the sun rising in the Lord's heaven, the same kind of splendor of the sun we have in a good woman. And, and this is no joke. Uh, Sam, you married a good woman, okay? You married a good girl. I, I say that not because of what I've been told. I say that not because of what I've been told, but uh, I've been involved. I, I more or less watched her grow up, okay? I, I've done several weddings in the family, certainly the weddings of her uncles, uh, uh, Uzalma. Um, I, that was the first uh, in 2006, I believe, and then we went up to New York like the year later or so uh, to celebrate that of DK, uh, DK and Lola Mogu. And of course, Uzoma and I see Chichi is there, the wife of uh, that, that first wedding. Uh, and then uh, a couple of years later, I think, maybe two or three, uh, we, we returned to the Maryland area to celebrate the wedding of Nnorom uh, and Ona. Uh, who, uh, yeah, so I, I've been involved, so I, I, I watched her grow up. Okay, did that prove anything? I really know her. Okay. <laughs> so I'm saying that I really know her. The second reading you chose uh, is from that beautiful chapter 13 of Paul's letter uh, to Paul's, Paul's first letter uh, to the Corinthians. And uh, it tells me that uh, this couple really thought things through. They thought things through. You, you planned for this. You reflected on the meaning of marriage. I, I met with them you know, on Zoom. These days you can do it on a Zoom. Uh, I met with them to talk about things, to make sure they understand, and I'm very confident that they, they do understand, because that beautiful chapter 13 tells us, it basically describes the real nature of Christian love, okay? I say Christian love, as I put the qualifier, because, you know, you hear about love all the time, but it's definitely not the same quality, okay? Uh, it's for some people, when they say, talk about love, it's a, uh, you know, marriage for them, it's basically a passing alliance of uh, two selfish people, you know, who come together for what they can get out of the marriage and to live together and try to obtain whatever fringe benefits accrue from the marriage. And uh, as soon as they're done getting 
you know, what they want. If, if, they, if, if they run out of supply, then it's time to move on, okay? And that's why I call it a passing alliance. But thankfully, that's not what's going on here. The reading tells us the true nature of Christian love. Christian love calls for sacrifice, okay? You know, some people, you know, you heard that saying that uh, love is blind, right? I don't know if you heard the other part. They say love is blind, but marriage is the eye opener. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, <laughs> marriage is the eye opener. But that, that basically com communicates that, uh, you know, this is not love made in Hollywood. You know, it's not the, the passing of lines that I'm talking about. The real Christian marriage calls for commitment. You heard it, you heard that read, telling us the quality. It says, uh, uh, love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrong bears all things, leads all things, hopes all things, endures all things, never fails. Remember, okay, remember, what this reading is basically telling you is that the subsequent days will not necessarily be like today. Mm -hmm. okay. Today is a very happy day, a joyful, uh, you know, you wish to have this day every day, but uh, in the real world, parents. <laughs> 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 so uh, your marriage, your love will be tested, in other words. Your love will be tested. You know, everyone likes to, uh, you know, be, be on the mountain top. You know, you think about being on the mountain top. It's, it's, it's a wonderful place. When you, if you ever done my mountain climbing, it's, I did it only once, and I swore I'd never go back. Um, but but it's, a, it's a beautiful place to, to be once you can get up there. Uninterrupted vision. Just beautiful. You know, watch the landscape and everything. It's the most beautiful place to be. Okay? Exhilarating, too. And it's all in marriage. Most people wish to be on that mountain top every day. But you know, there are some days that you're going to find yourself down in the valleys. Mm -hmm. In the valley, you don't have that kind of clear vision. You don't have the altitude. It's not as joyful down there. But here's one thing about the mountain and the, the valley. If you really if you notice, there is always more vegetation down in the valley than you have ever found on the mountain top. And what that means is that your love will grow more Amen. when you're down in the back, when it's being challenged, when it is being tested. Yes. Then you will learn endurance. Then you will learn forgiveness. Then you will learn forbearance. Do not, do not overlook those moments. They are special moments. They may be painful. They are special, special moments. Moments when you can really, really grow. You know, I'm, I'm sure some of you have heard me say before, I think I've said it in the previous you know, where I mentioned that, you know, oftentimes you see these couples celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary, or 60th, and the father, we've been married for 50 years, mm -hmm. we've been married for 60 years, and oftentimes when they, when they say that, they're, they're focusing on the longevity of the marriage. Which is not a bad thing. It's a wonderful thing. Okay? Especially in these days. But I often try to point out that longevity has its place, but the marriage is not successful simply because a couple have lived for 60 years and been able to avoid both divorce and homicide. <laughs> You know what the point of the marriage is? The couple is supposed to become better people because of the marriage. 
Then you can look, I mean, the one who wasn't generous before has gained generosity. One who didn't know patience, learn patience, and hope you do learn patience. And, you know, it, the one who didn't understand forgiveness or couldn't forgive has hopefully learned to forgive over and over again. Then you can look back and say, boy, it's been wonderful. 50 years of growth. You mix, you know? 50 years of being better people. That's what I pray for. That's what I hope for. That's what I hope for. That's what we all hope, and I hope I speak for all of you. you know, that this be a time of growth. And if you understand what that means, it means that we expect, I mean, you're expected to get better and better with every passing day. Okay? You're expected to grow. And to do that, to be able to do that, you need a little something called prayer. Don't ever forget that. Every day you wake up, get on your knees and thank the Lord. Together. Thank you all together. When you have kids, teach them to join you in that activity as well. Do it in the morning, do it in the evening, before they go to bed. You don't have to do 30 minutes or an hour of prayer or whatever. Just at least 5-10 minutes of every day. Just sanctify the day. To invoke the blessings of the Lord on, on yourselves, on your family. Besides, praying every day helps you have a, a good pers perspective on, on things. A good perspective on life generally. You need that. No matter how bad things are, you always see the sunny side of things. Because you pray. Because the Lord feeds you with His grace. Then you can always see things in a good way, in a better perspective. See, in a, have a hopeful vision for things. Not a pessimistic one. You know, the thing with perspective, I don't know if you've heard this before, but they said, you know, there are two kinds of people in the world. There are those who wake up and they say, Good morning, Lord. And those who wake up and they say, Good Lord, it's morning. <laughs> yeah. That's a different perspective. The one, the one perspective, the first one, has an attitude of gratitude. Doesn't mean everything is good. But you thank the Lord anyway. And you hope for a better tomorrow with the Lord's grace. My prayer for you is that you will remember to pray every day. To ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to help you. And if it seems like things aren't working, working out, just have patience. Ask the Lord for His grace. And it'll be fine. Do not be swayed by what your friends have. You know, sometimes uh, for some people, it's about keeping up with the Joneses. You've heard that. You know, oh, they just bought a new boat. You know, guess, guess, who bought, guess, guess who bought his wife a, a new car? You know, uh, do not look on those things. Do not look at those things. They are, you know, they're passing away. They are relevant. What matters the most is the love that you have for each other. That it be sacrificial in nature. You know, I always like to say, if you're looking for the true nature of Christian love, look at the cross. What made him do that? What made him hang on the, on the cross? Because of love. God so loved the world that he sent his only son. Okay? He sent his only son to do what? To die for us. That we might be saved. So that whosoever believed in him might have life and have it abundantly and have it eternally. So emulate the sacrifice of the Lord. What that means is that every day you sacrifice for each other. Christian marriage is about giving, not about taking. It's about giving. You are called to give and give and give again. Never get tired of giving. If you go into it with the attitude of giving, then you will never be sad if you do not obtain. Okay? Because you are there to give in the first place. 
So sacrifice for one another. Sacrifice for one another. Sacrifice for one another. That's what this is about. It's not an easy game. But by the grace of God, you will make it. The grace of God helps you win all things. Okay? Take life easy. If it isn't, if you're having difficulties, just remember, just take it easy. As I said, no one wins at all. I, I speak to you especially, Chinan, because I, I saw how stressed. I know you. It, you look so stressed about this thing, that, you know, this wedding. You know, I told you, just take it easy. I mean, just whatever, do whatever is possible. The day will come, just the next day, this will be over, you know. Uh, everything doesn't have to work out a hundred percent, okay? Important thing is that you get married. We don't have food to eat. It's fine. You're married. <laughs> I, I, I hope she knows that's a joke. <laughs> this congregation expects to be fed. So, uh, yeah. So, but, but, you know, but, but again, Take life easy. Take life easy. I remember reading about someone who says, well, uh, God, God put me on this earth to ac accomplish uh, several things and, uh, before I die. And, and now I'm so busy, I'll never die. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so far behind, I'll never die. But, but remember, just take it easy. Take it easy, and it will work out. All right? So that on the last day, you, 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 your whole, I told you, you, you have a, your mission in this is to make each other better, to make sense out of one another. And when you go before God's throne, that's heavenly throne, you can boldly say, I, I did my part to bring my partner along to the kingdom. That's what I hope it will be for you. Let it not be a, a situation where, you know, you just... You don't even want to be close to each other because there's just so, so much chaos. There are marriages like that, I hope you know. You know, I, 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 someone told me a joke about a fellow who died and, 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 and went to heaven. As he uh, approached the, the pearly gates, uh, St. Peter is standing right there. Uh, he wanted in, and St. Peter says, want in? Yeah, you know, to get in, you have to spell a word. Okay, so uh, what's the word, uh, Peter said? And uh, what's the word the guy has? And Peter said, well, the word is love. You can spell love, you can come in. Oh, that's easy, he said the guy. It's L-O-V-E. Well, come on in to the joy of the everlasting kingdom. Prepare for you. And as he was uh, just, just gotten in and getting a tour, uh, with St. Peter, they hear someone at the gate. He looked back and it's his wife. Sue, Sue, what are you doing here? Uh, he asked. Well, I, I was returning uh, from your funeral, Bob, and uh, got hit by a car. Now, here I am. A and Bob just took over. He said, well, you know, to, to enter, you have to spell a word. All right, so what's the word? And Bob goes, uh, Czechoslovakia. <laughs> God in your marriage, don't worry. Everything will be fine in the end. And in the end, you'll have reason to praise the Lord for the community of many who are saved in His holy kingdom. May God bless you this day. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite the couple and the wedding party to join us here. We're going to do the real thing.
are you doing? God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you have set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divine. O oh God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O oh God, by whom woman is joined to man and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Chiwen. And let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her, so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, May these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. Amen. And grant that, reaching at last together, the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now that the Lutamilore and uh, Chingwen have given themselves to each other by the exchange of uh, vows, the giving and receiving of rings, I declare that they are man and wife. <laughs> Present to you, Mr. and Dr. Mrs. Lutami
again, no be so. Can you won't capture my soul? I'm again, no be so. Make we one one ball on ball. Better, 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 better. I'm loose. Even better than the para. To not in Josie, I'm in Josie. Won't call me for one one Josie. I'm not playing with you, I'm not joking. My thought of mom is loaded. Me a king for go, but I'm on bolly. I'm on duty, but I'm on lucky. They want do me, they want do me, they want do me, but they want do me. When you won't want me, when you won't want me, I'm in San Francisco, Jami. When you won't want me, when you won't want me, I just flew in from Miami. Peru, para, Peru, para. I'm loose, even Peru don't be para. Pour out the bottle, I wanna level up. When I'm with you, I never get enough. So I ain't I'm not in a rush. I can hear music when you're here. Tonight we're rolling, party till closing. Since I put the ring on the finger, it's still frozen. Love in slow motion. I wanna feel you over me, yeah. Something magic in your eyes, yeah. Girl, I love the way you ride it, and it happens every time you arrive. That's right, girl, I want you in my life, yeah. There's a heaven in this right here. Yeah. I will never leave your side, stay tonight. When you won't see me, when you won't see me, I'm in West London this evening, giving me the feelings. No, I'm not leaving till I fly Atlantic speaking. Peru, nah, girl, I'd rather go find somewhere quiet. You glow, and I get lost here in your eyes. I'm again, I'll be so, girl, you just capture my soul. I'm again, I'll be so, make me wanna.